Welcome to another exciting episode of 3D Movie Reviews. I'm your host, 3D Jake, and today I'm reviewing with a collaboration with Jacob Martin, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I've been really wanting to do Texas Chainsaw Massacre for a long time, and when the new one came out, I thought it'd be a perfect time. Sorry it's taken so long. I know the movie came out in February, and now it's April. But I promise that these reviews are going to be awesome. I got a lot of collaborations with a lot of people. Most of the movies I have are been collaborations on the Texas Chainsaw, and I can't wait to show you all of them. So here's here's Jacob Martin's review of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and then we'll see mine afterwards. Enjoy. What's going on, Jacob, and all his viewers? I'm Jacob Martin, and. Thank you, Jacob, for having me on your channel once again, talking about the 1974 horror film, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, directed by Toby Hooper. I've actually seen this film once before. I watched it several years ago when I was starting to explore more horror movies in my life. And yeah, it was neat revisiting this film once again. Toby Hooper, like I said, directed... The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I've only seen, I think, two of his movies to date. I've seen this and Poltergeist, which some allege that Steven Spielberg ghost directed that movie, but that's a different story for another day. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre is about these teenagers who are traveling and they run out of gas and they decide to wait it out at one of the kids' grandfather's house while they wait for more gas to arrive because we're in a small town in Texas and things move a lot slower in a lot of these small towns. So go to the grandfather's house only to find out that the house is now occupied by a chainsaw-wielding serial killer named the Letterface. And this movie is interesting. The movie markets itself is that it's based on based off a true story it, it's about these four teenagers who get massacred pretty much even though come to find out that's other rubbish they actually just made that up and just made you believe that it's based off a true story to lure people into seeing it for themselves now Leatherface was actually inspired by a real life serial killer come to find out and they use that real life serial killer as the basis for the movie but other than that, this is just a fictionalized story. That's all there is to it. I guess kind of like what they did in the 90s with the Blair Witch Project made people believe that was a real life found footage movie. And that boosted the marketing campaign up. And it was easy to do then because social media wasn't as big then as it is now. So when you're told something, you're like, oh, I guess this is true, right? And... Yeah, it's interesting how things worked back then. Uh, this movie, I respect it as a horror classic. I think it's well directed by Toby Hooper. You can see the blood, sweat, and tears he brought in making this film. I've seen videos of you know, behind the scenes and making of of this movie. And I know it was a hard, exhausting task because you know the movie was shot on hot summer days. Him and the crew were exhausted, and even the cast. Everyone was sweating. They had to redo takes multiple times because Toby Hooper was a perfectionist. So, everyone was suffering on the set of this movie because of the temperatures and Toby Hooper's perfectionism. But, everything did pay off. I mean, this is a well-crafted, independently made horror film. I love the atmosphere that it does bring. There are some unsettling moments in this movie, like I love the opening shot with the corpse of the grandpa. I forgot about that on rewatching. When that's like the first thing you see, you're like, "Ooh, how's this story gonna go down?" This is intense stuff. And then I love the third act when we meet the cannibal family. That was disturbing stuff. When the final girl is brought in around the dinner table with Leatherface and the Cannibal family. That was intense. I will give it that. And then we see, like, the grandpa of the Cannibal family, who we're meant to believe is a corpse, and then it turns out, nope, he's still alive, and he's sucking on her finger. Yeah, that's pretty intense stuff. But I gotta be honest, this is not one of my favorite horror movies. I've seen the film twice, and... 
It's not one of my favorites. I've struggled to actually get into it. As much as I respect it, as much as I enjoy it to a certain extent, the two things that hold it back for me, one, I don't like any of the teenage characters. I think they're disposable. They're poorly written. I mean, I think the acting's fine, but the writing and uh, the writing of these characters is so poor. I find all of them very annoying and unlikable. I honestly don't care if they get killed off or not. Uh, the character I couldn't stand the most was the wheelchair kid. I just thought he was too annoying and too demanding. And he used his, like, handicap as a way to make the character more annoying. And I'm not trying to say it to demean anybody that's in that situation, but this character just does not work. I did not enjoy him. He, he was whiny. He was annoying. He was too much of a pushover to everyone else. I didn't enjoy that character at all. And also, I'm not that crazy big a fan of Leatherface. I'm not sure if that's an unpopular opinion or not, but yeah, Leatherface, he pales compared to other slasher figures. Like, if you stack him between Freddy Krueger or Michael Myers or, heck, even Ghostface, all the other slashers would be, like, right up here. Leatherface is, like, here for me because I can't take the guy seriously. It's this big, bulging guy wearing a goofy-looking mask, wielding a chainsaw, making goofy noises. He's chasing the teenagers around going, <laughs> That's not scary. That's goofy. And that's my problem with Leatherface. Like, people claim they're scared of Leatherface, and I just don't get it, personally. Leatherface kind of took me out of the movie. Now, one kill Leatherface does, I'll admit, is brutal, especially for that time. Like, Leatherface takes one of the girls and hooks her to a meat hook to where she slowly dies. That's brutal stuff right there. I have to give Toby Hooper credit for that. But, yeah, I'm not too crazy about Leatherface as a character. So, wrapping up, I respect a lot of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's a well-crafted movie. I think it has some great tension. I love the atmosphere, and also it's under an hour and a half long, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. I love, like, the last 20 minutes where we see the cannibal family. That was when the movie got really intense. And I, it ended on a very haunting note, I'll give it that. But I'm not a fan of the teenage characters, and I'm not a fan of Leatherface, and that's what holds it back for me. I don't think it's near as good of a horror movie compared to some of the horror movies that I absolutely love, like Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream, Psycho. Those are like my big four horror movies, but that's just my personal opinion. But this movie's not bad. I respect it for what it is, and if this is one of your favorites, then I can respect that as well. So I'll be giving the Texas Chainsaw Massacre a three and a half out of five stars, and on my 100 point scale, it's getting a 66 out of 100. So thank you, Jacob, for having me on your channel once again, talking about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm sure he'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out my YouTube channel where I also do movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, other fun stuff on my channel. Jacob's been on my channel. We're currently going through all the Scream movies on my channel if you want to check those out. And I'm excited to hear, Jacob, what you have to say on this classic horror movie. So, Jacob, back to you. Thanks again, Jacob, once again. I appreciate your review and I love their thoughts. Can't wait to work with you again. So, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was a movie that was directed by Toby Hooper and written, co-written by him and Kim Hankel. And the movie obviously stars Marilyn Burns and Gunnar Hansen as Leatherface. And it's just one of those movies. Now I will say, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is not my favorite slasher film. I do appreciate it a lot for many things, okay? One thing I really appreciate about the movie is that it's an independent movie. It was an independently made film by a group of college students. That was one thing I really appreciated about the movie, is that it was independently made. I appreciated that. I'm glad it wasn't like a big studio movie and everything else. It was, hey, they got a bunch of money from investors, they went out there and they shot this movie, okay? I appreciate that. And it's a, for an independent movie, I will say, it is a well-made independent film, you know? 
And I really appreciate that. And that's why I really can't fault, find fault in this movie because it's an independent movie. It's not really a giant studio film. It's just like they went out and made this movie for on a cheap, low, low, low budget. And so I'm going to be easy on this review. I mean, it's not a bad movie in any way, shape, or form, but I'm just saying like it is could be better today. Like if you put this movie out today, it's, it automatically was probably not getting a good grade. It would probably bash for credit. But as a from the 74, it works. This movie works. There's so many themes in this movie, and it even has a tagline of based on a true story, even though it's not a based on a true story. In fact, the movie, Toby Hooper himself said he was inspired from two things. One, he was inspired because he was at a mall during Christmas season. It was such a long line. He looked over at the cha- hardware store and saw the chainsaws, and he said, I bet you anything, grab a chainsaw and uh, get the chainsaw and clear out a crowd. You know? And of course, you know, and then of course, of course, there was a serial killer in like Wisconsin called Ed Gain. And like they heard that he kept bodies, mutilated bodies. And so they were like, oh man, would you imagine if there was like a killer that did that and used a chainsaw? And then they were at like a costume party, him and Kim Hankel, and they saw somebody wear a cadaver mask and go, that's a, that would be a cool killer face, you know? And eventually they got together and wrote the script called Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And they went out in Texas and shot the movie for cheap, cheap, cheap. And with a bunch of college students and the movie became this huge cultural phenomenon so much so where i think it's got like eight or nine sequels and you know i mean and this movie or actually i think it's like four or five sequels and then like two remakes and so i mean it's still a fun movie i mean this movie's still a great time to watch and you know for a movie called the texas chancel massacre there's never a massacre in this movie it's just like a bunch a couple of killings like I understand Massacre packs more of a punch, but it could easily be called the Texas Chance All Killers. Just saying. And I will say, there is a lot of stuff in this movie that is unique about it. Like, for instance, you are not, the killers are not in this movie. They're not introduced until like almost like, like 45 minutes into the movie before you even get to the killers. Like, you obviously you see the bad guys, but you don't see like Leatherface for, for 45 minutes into the movie. Like, this movie builds up to the kills. It doesn't even, and you don't even really see them. It's all implied for. It's not really like, you don't see him kill, kill somebody really in the movie. It's all like, you know, from like almost like a background perspective of, oh, you didn't see the chainsaw go through the guy in the wheelchair, or you don't see him cut the guy in the head off. It's just all implied. You know, because you see it, and but it's still horrifying at the time. You know, I mean, nowadays you're like, I watched Saul where the guy gets cut in half. I mean, oh, forget this movie. I mean, you know, but used to that was like that was horrifying. The thought of like, oh, all this horrible stuff's happening, and you don't know, like you can't do nothing about it. And then it's just people keep coming in one by one in this house, and it's just like they keep dropping off by flies. Eventually, Leatherface gets smart and goes. You know, after the third or fourth person came in the house, he's like, what the hell's happening? And then he's like, I better go investigate. And then he gets his chainsaw, and then chaos ensures. And, like, even the, like, and even plays with you psychologically, where, like, there was a lot of psychologicalness into the movie, where you're just, like, at the dinner table scene especially, where you're just sitting there being psychologically tortured. You know, like, you're being just, like, driven mad of the scene. And then eventually, you have Grandpa, like, they're just trying to bash your head in, and you know, like, there's even people you thought were trusted allies in this movie. Like, oh, it's a gas station guy who turns out to be even just as crazy as the other people. You know, like, the hitchhiker, we obviously, we knew this guy was crazy from the beginning. But the gas station guy, the cook, he was just, like, you know, a nice guy. Like, he even told him, like, oh, don't go up there. And, you know, you find out it's all, like, they're all brothers. And so it's like, okay. You know, this is all, like, you know, it was a ruse. You know, like, you know. But in fairness, he did tell him to go up there. And I do find this fascinating because it almost is like a hook, line, and sinker of like, you know, or mousetrap, you know, because they keep just falling into place. And I really appreciate that in a way because, you know, this movie easily could have been done today. But it was so hard to make, especially in 74, and it has such a great posters and everything. We're even getting a video game based on this movie, you know. And I just think this is a unique movie, and it's well independently shot. Like, to me, I understand, like, you know, like I always say, like, even with Sam Raimi and James Wan, you know, first-time directors on first-time horror films, usually, you know, like, it's always a mixed bag. You know, James Wan says, like, oh, I wish I saw, I could have easily went back and did change some stuff with Saw because I was a first-time filmmaker compared to who I am now. You know, Wes Craven said the same thing. 
Sam Raimi, I feel like he did a great job with Evil Dead 1. I understand there's some mistakes in there, but even with this movie, Toby Hooper did a great job with Texas Chainsaw Massacre to where it's not really, there's not many mistakes in this movie at all. Like, to me, I could be like, you could fool me if you said there was no mistakes in this movie. And it worked because apparently he's went on and directed other horror films, like such as he directed the Salem's Lot movie. He directed, um, you know, well, he kind of directed Poltergeist, you know, like Steven Spielberg actually directed it, but he kind of was, he kind of did the day to day operation while Spielberg did most of the shots. And so, which is fine, you know, he kept the fire one for Spielberg, it's fine. He also directed, like, a movie, I think, called, like, Crocodile, or was it Alligator? It's one of them where these people in, in New Orleans go to get an alligator, and, like, they get find alligator eggs, and the alligator comes after them and tries to kill them because they have our babies. I think it's called Alligator. I'll have to check on that. You know? But, you know, it's, it's really... He directed a lot of movies, and unfortunately... He did direct the sequel to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And you know what? In fair, I'll talk about that movie next week. But in fairness, he was said he wanted to make a comedy. He never said it was meant to be a horror film compared to the first one, which was a horror film. You know, he wanted to reinvent the genre. And unfortunately, he did for the wrong reasons. But apparently, it's, people like it now. Is even Steven does. But I will say this, this movie is unique and it holds a dear place in my heart. I actually do have a Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface necklace over there. And I have all the movies. I love this movie so much. I think it's a well-made indie film. It's a well-made indie film. I really like that. It's a well-made. I dream of making a movie like this one day. Like, it's so great. You know, like, and it's, like, it's a first film. So you can't really say, oh, it's a terrible movie because it was made by a first-time filmmaker. I mean, a lot of first-time filmmakers sometimes get it right. You know, like, you could be, like, a Sam Raimi or a James Wan or a Wes Craven, or you become the guys who made things killing. Obviously, what Toby Hooper did not go in that direction, he became a James Wan, a Wes Craven, or a Sam Raimi. And so that's a good thing. <laughs> he didn't turn into the things killings guys who first time out made their movie and made a complete dog shit movie that people laughed at. So... You know, it's always an even Steven Silver lining, and I really appreciate this movie. I appreciate the cultural impact it has. I appreciate this, that, you know, it's a well-made movie, and it still holds up till today. It's not like, uh, I know some people would rather prefer the Michael Bay remake. I do, too. But I also appreciate this movie, because this movie le led us into, like, you know, this... He became a slasher icon like Jason, like Freddy. And he was one of the first. I mean, I understand Psycho was the first, you know, and then Black Christmas, and then, of course, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I know he was there before Michael Myers or Jason or Freddy. So, you know, I mean, good on him, you know? And, you know, and I will talk about the other sequels in the review, but I just want to say thank you all. If I had to give this movie a grade, I am going to give this movie a...